take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. It's time! Oh shit, it's Sunday, November 22nd, 2020. This is the Church of MMA podcast. My name is Tabor Cragen. My name is Mason Knight. This is episode 48, UFC 255 recap. After that, we jump into some MMA news, and then we talk about the fight night, Blades versus Lewis. But Tabor, where do we begin? With our social media accounts, Mason, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at the Church of MMA. Guys, if you aren't following us, make sure you go and do it. We are posting clips of the show, funny memes, trying to make you laugh. Hit us up. Absolutely. And uh, shout out to our YouTube channel. We had we just hit a 350 subscribers. Uh, we thank you guys. Constantly growing each and every week. That's why we do this. Uh, we put out, we try to put out, you know, good entertaining content from the fans' perspective by the fans because uh, that's all we are. That's all we ever claim to be. Yeah. And uh, if you guys want to get some church merch, that link is in the description below. Uh, we've got a few designs that we've drawn up and uh, put together. So uh, go check that out. Yeah, absolutely. And all we got to right. start with this main event, Mason. Absolutely. I mean, are we in walking into a new era in, in flyweight? Yeah, I think unquestionably. We are. And you know, we we had we had talked about this before in our preview show for UFC 255, which was episode 47. Unquestionably, we are in a new era for the flyweight division because, man, I'm looking at David Davidson Figueredo, and I go, he he is different than a DJ. He is different than a Henry Cejudo. This man is on a, 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 another level. Yeah. Another level. Now, now keep in mind, if, if Henry were to come back and fight him, it would be an interesting matchup. And I, I've learned one thing, never count out Triple C, no matter how cringy mm-hmm. it gets, folks. Do not count that man out. But what I will say with Devinson Figueredo is he is doing something that we have never seen in the flyweight division, and that is finishing fighters and finishing them early and making each and every fight an entertaining fight. Yeah, making them extremely exciting. I mean, that's, that was the biggest thing with DJs. His fights just were not exciting. No one was rushing to go buy that pay-per-view. Right. I think they might do it with uh, Davison. I'm just, I don't know. I would love to see the numbers of this last pay-per-view. It's probably pretty low. Well, yes. And, and again, we got to give it time. We got to give it enough time for the UFC to develop their stars, to develop their champions. But, hey, Dana, you know, Lorenzo, all you guys, like you got to look at Davidson Figueredo and go, hey, this is a guy we can market and really push because he's going to be your champ for a while. Yeah. Well, and he has for a, a while and he has an incredible story he Dude, does. growing up in the jungle. Yeah. Coming out of Brazil. I mean, it's just it's it's well, something you write in books. Like it, it's a it movie. Is. It really is a movie yeah. script. It's like a Francis Ngannou, too. Yes, you know, absolutely. Coming out of the sand mines. But it's just, it really is incredible, uh, his story. He is now 20 and 1, and he's already defended his belt. And I, I know this is MMA news. We shouldn't jump into it, but we kind of we have to talk about it a little bit. Uh, Davidson Figueredo has already, already verbally agreed to fight Brendan Moreno. Yeah, both of them have. Already. Yeah, Crazy. and the... the and uh, they are going to take over that UFC 256 main main event. We'll talk about that later as to why that is in our MMA news. But nonetheless, I mean, dude, Davidson Figueredo is game. Yes. Like, I, that'll be the first time in UFC history. I haven't checked the numbers. haven't back checked the Back-to-back stat. pay-per-views? Back-to-back pay-per-views. Headline UFC 255 and 256, the headline. That's never been done in UFC history. This guy's already making history in the sport. It's gangster shit. Well, I mean, it he is. took virtually zero damage in that fight. Zero damage. And he's such, a, he's such a savage. I don't know how that man cuts to 125. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't know how that's physically possible. Mary came home from work, and she was like, that guy's 125 pounds. I go, that's what he <laughs> Not cut. right now. Dude. Yeah, no, not right now. I go, but that's what he cuts to. Yeah, he cuts to 125. Yeah, and but you heard looks, Joe even mention it. I, I bet know. you he's 150 pounds right we, now. We were joking around about it on our fight companion months back. We were mm-hmm. like, dude, it looks like his little brother, Joseph Benavidez, out there. No disrespect to Joseph, but it's like... Davidson Figueredo, man, like I, I, I do have my concerns with him in wondering how long is he going to be able to make flyweight? Yeah. That weight, man, because that's championship well, weight. It's got to be 125 on the dot. And how he long looks can he make like that? a skeleton every time he's on that freaking, every time he's but on that then, scale, he yeah. looks terrible. He looks like death itself. And I totally agree with that. But then when he gets in the octagon, he, he definitely fl- uh, fleshes out, man. I mean, you see it. He is cut. He is jacked. 
It's yeah. just incredible this man makes 125. And just to talk about the performance, look, Alex Perez, those leg kicks were serious. And Alex, oh, yeah. Alex Perez is no joke. And I think we did, you know, in our preview show of last week, underestimate Alex a little bit. And I think that was the theme of our episode last week, which, you know, we do need to start putting a little bit more respect on these c- contenders, even when they do get beat. You know, we kind of joke around sometimes. We like to have fun on the show. But you know what? I know Alex Perez went out there and he lost in the first round getting submitted, but... Dude, he looked pretty good. I mean, it's just Davidson Figueredo's on another level, and I think that is the overall theme of this card. You might have a good round. You might have a good moment. But to beat the champ, you got to beat the champ. And I just don't see it for a very long time. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it multiple times this year alone. Mm -hmm. People going down to the ground with people they should not have. And that's exactly what happened here. He went down and engaged in that grappling with a man who was a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Savage, Unbelievable squeeze. I mean, I actually thought for a second Alex was going to get out of that guillotine. He looked like his head was about to pop out at any moment. Didn't happen. It looked like right as what it was about to pop out was when it had the tightest squeeze, and yep. that's when the tap came. So it's amazing. He, he should have stayed. He should, he, I mean, hindsight 2020. We all know this. And mm-hmm. going back in the replays, he should have he kept the standing because he was finding a little bit of success. He was making Davison look a little bit human because, let's be real, Davison is looking leaps and bounds of Above the above rest the of the entire, yeah, above the entire division. Yeah, he might he might be in a Valentina Sevchenko situation here pretty soon. We'll see. I mean, he if this Moreno fight happens, without a doubt, he's the best one twenty five er in the world. Maybe Henry Sudo, but they're never going to make that cut, and he's never going to cut that. Again. Eventually, he's going to have to move up to one thirty five. Well, in in Tabor, that is the game plan. D- d- make no bones about it. That is Davidson Figueredo's game plan. I'll tell you why. Uh, look, man, this guy is ambitious. He and when 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 he walks into the octagon, you see the fire in that man's eyes. Yeah. When he is there, he is going to take your head off. That's all he cares about. This man wants to decimate the flyweight division, and then he immediately wants to make that jump up to bantamweight, and he will fight for a title. You know, and, and try to become double champ. There's no question in my mind that's what he's doing. There's no reason for him to take that Brendan Moreno fight on such short notice. But he knows, he knows in his heart of hearts that he is leaps and bounds a, a better fighter than all these guys in the flyweight division right now. He yeah. knows that. He wants to decimate them as quickly as possible, obliterate them, and then move up and fight for a bantamweight belt because, dude, that man deserves an immediate shot at bantamweight. If he can go out there and beat Brendan uh, Moreno in the first round, who else is there? I mean, I mean, seriously, who Cody else is Garbrandt, there? Cody Garbrandt, that's it. And he was chirping a whole lot on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. And he, yeah, he yeah. was not impressed with Alex, Prez, Alex Prez's performance. Says, just wait. Just wait. Once I recover from COVID, it's on. I'll know, fucking but, knock this lemon head out. And I guess that. Said? But we, we, you know, we saw the TJ Dillashaw effect of dropping down to 125. Yeah. No, I am not saying Cody Garbrandt's a cheater. That's not where I'm going with it. But what I am saying is it's debilitating on your body. That is oh, yeah. such a hard weight cut, especially for a guy who probably walks around at 150. 155, you know, to cut down to 125, unless you're a savage like Davidson Figueredo and put on a massive, beautiful performance. I, I, I gotta be honest with you. Like the more we talk about that, then Cody had to pull out for some unknown reason. I guess he had an injury or something. I start to well, wonder. It was COVID, I think. Was it COVID? Well, it, it was COVID. I mean, he got COVID weeks before, yeah, the, and then they said it was it still on. Yeah, if it would have been COVID, they would have just pushed it out, just like they're doing with uh, uh, Moik- uh, Moicano. You know, they just pushed that out to 256. That was supposed to be for our next uh, next weekend. So what? But basically, what I'm saying is, I don't think that weight cut is a good move for Cody Garbrandt. I think you know, after his phenomenal knockout in his last fight, his last performance, like dude, stick at bantamweight and just wait. Get the belt at bantamweight, and then you can then you can fight Davidson Figueredo. I don't like that cut for him. I really don't, man. Yeah, I think he just knows that 135, it's a lot harder an argument for him to get a title shot at 135 right now than it is at 125. He could definitely skip that line at 125 moving down. But at 135, you know, he's going to have to put together two or three wins. So it's a lot easier for him when it comes to the paycheck and when it comes to a business decision, you know, it's business. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't hate Cody Garbrandt for that. But uh, again, like I don't think you're getting the best return for your buck when, when you're trying to cut down to 125 like that. Yeah. I mean, would I would I tune in? Would I pay for the pay per view? Absolutely. It's Cody Garbrandt versus Davidson Figueredo. Yeah, of course. That's yeah. gonna be a great fight. But do I want to see it from a personal level? Like, as far as a fan of Cody Garbrandt, no. 
because I don't want to see him get knocked out. I don't want to see him make that that weight cut that's just way too significant on his body. Yeah, but. well, hopefully Davison just takes this next Moreno fight. Hopefully it isn't this next three weeks. Crazy. Imagine that turnaround. Has match my of shit. It's wild, man. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, it's wild. Well, hopefully that happens. Hopefully he, you know, gets a big win, and then maybe he goes, yeah, fuck it. I just took out the number one contender. I don't need Cody Garbrandt mm-hmm. at 125. Yeah. Move up to 135. Take that Cody Garbrandt fight there. And then instantly, title shot, number one contender. He could skip Aljamain Sterling. Could you imagine that? I mean, we did just hit that news. I mean, let's just talk about it a little bit. Yeah, We're going to definitely touch on it. We're definitely going to touch on it again. I swear to God, news. I swear. <laughs> no. No. That fight did fall out, so you never know, know anything could happen. But you happen. know what? It's not Aljamain Sterling's fucking fault. Yeah. It's Petra Jan's fault. So if they pull Aljamain Sterling from that and they put Davidson Figueredo in his place, if he goes out there and beats Brandon Moreno, I'm going to come unglued. I'm it serious. Happen. It very well could happen. There is no one who deserves a title shot more than Aljamain Sterling, and it's not even his fault. And they're, No. Don't get me going, dude. My head's going to fucking explode. <laughs> Aljamain Sterling gets the next shot no matter what. Well, that's why I'm saying. That's why I'm saying Figueredo Garbrandt at 35. Winner of that fight gets a 135 title shot. And then you know what? After sure. after, you know, a couple a year of Figueredo not defending 125 belt, they relinquish that to Moreno or Right, but like but that. I have a question for you. Why would the champion at flyweight go up and fight at 135, not for a belt. Anderson Silva, Forrest Griffin. Anderson Silva versus Stefan Bonner. Yeah, but we knew that was going to be a one-off. We knew Anderson wasn't going to make a run at 205. He could have, though. I, he I know, he almost should have. But come on, we're talking about almost 15 years ago. This is different in the UFC. This is before we had the champ-champ scenarios, the situations. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you, you saw Connor go from featherweight to, to lightweight. You know, you saw DC go from light heavyweight to heavyweight immediately. Mm-hmm. I just think when you become so dominant... To go and just fight a number one contender, I don't think it does it. Like uh, again, in like if I see Davidson Figueroa move up, I want to see him fight for the belt immediately because he's a champion. He deserves that opportunity instantly. Okay, so, so again, maybe two more defenses then. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. to give that you know, time to play out. One thirty-five. You know, I, I got to be honest with you. I, oh, looking at this, looking at this this list here, I, I don't think Cody Garbrandt should get an immediate shot at bantamweight. Look, dude. Aljamain Sterling is clear cut, concise, number one. So we do that Petrion Aljamain Sterling fight, right? Number two is Corey Sanhagen. Yeah, Sanhagen came back and, and, and won his last fight, but he did just lose to Aljamain Sterling. If Davidson Figueredo goes out there and starches Brandon Moreno, just saying, mm-hmm. it, it, fight could go either way, whatever. But if he goes out there and starches him, and then we have this Petrion Aljamain Sterling, whoever the winner of that, I'm fine if they take on Davidson Figueredo right away. I really am. Because, dude, I'm telling you right now, Figueredo is a savage. Like, I think this man could definitely be a double Double champ with, without yep. a doubt. A double champ. Without a doubt. Yep. And when you're champion of 135, what's the point of cutting weight to 125 ever again? Yeah, I know. Just fucking give that shit up. You know, yeah. why kill yourself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, so that that's the way I see it. I think you do that Petrion, Aljamain Sterling fight. And I think, I, man, there's a business move behind this. There's got to be something behind this. I was talking about how he wants to decimate the flyweight division. Because after that, you have Askar Askarov. That's it, man. Mm -hmm. That's literally it. Roy Vall, if he puts a few wins together, but he just got beat by Moreno. But he's he's not going to put in a few wins by December, which is when Brendan Moreno and and Figueredo are going on. So I'm I'm telling you right now, if if Figueredo goes out there and starches Brendan Moreno, dude, they got to set up this bandweight title uh, super fight. They have to with the winner of Petrion and Aljamain Sterling. Yeah, they have to. I agree. Because there's there's no one in the flyweight division and there's no one in the bantamweight to take the next shot. Clear cut and concise. Yeah, you got a point. You got a point. With everything you just said there. I love it. You predicted the future, Mason. Hopefully. Fucking genius. Hopefully. All right. Let's move on to this co-main event of the evening. Oh, Absolutely. W- real quick. Picks. We both took uh, Figueredo. So we did. points for both of us. Yep. Saw that coming. Valentina Shevchenko, Jennifer Maya. Shocking. Shocking. You know what? Uh, I know you're being a little sarcastic here, but I am shocked. I, I was too, shocked, I'm not going to lie. And I'm actually really impressed with, with Jennifer Meyer here. Uh, look, uh, to be able to even win, a re- we're almost talking Habib status. Like, yeah. And it's so funny because Valentina Shevchenko dominated four out of five rounds. Yeah. She did. She won. Clear cut and concise. All three judges scorecard and every judges or every single fan knew that she won the fight. But it's still one of those Habib effects where it's like, wow, you took a round from her? Mm-hmm. 
You, took you made her look human? Wait, she bled? Mm-hmm. She bled her own blood? Nobody makes me bleed my own Nobody blood. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> Nobody. God, I should have cued that. <laughs> yeah, you should have clipped it. But no, like for real. Yeah, you're totally right. So like when we see that Valentina Shevchenko is human, and not only that, but Jennifer Maya hung around for five rounds. That's really hard to do with uh, Valentina Shevchenko as well. Yeah, not she didn't just hang around. She won a round she, yep. dominantly she, mm-hmm. on the ground, completely yep. out grappled her, got a nice takedown. Oh, yeah, for sure. Held yeah. her up against the fence, you yeah. know, and was is, was doing work. I mean, Valentina Shevchenko, was, her defense was on point as well. But Jennifer Meyer looked good, man. And, like, especially when Valentina is a minus 2,000 favorite. Yeah. Well, at one point she was, what, a plus 350 or yeah. plus 200 um, or something like that? Yeah, minus 350 after the second round. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, which I'm telling you right now, I was joking around with you when we rewatched that fight. But, dude, I would have put my second mortgage <laughs> on my house. For that, dude. Yeah. I'm serious. Like, you put everything on a minus 350 for Valentina Shevchenko. Yeah, everything. Everything. But nonetheless, and it still worked out. Yeah. Nonetheless, Valentina proves uh, that she is the undisputed flyweight champion of the world. And that it's ne- it's not going to change. It's not going to change, folks, for a very long time. Hats off to Jennifer Maya. She won a round. Uh, and I thought she looked really good doing it. And, uh, you know, put, put Valentina in a compromised position. Let's well, be honest. Well, the one thing I've noticed is, you know, Valentina's... A pretty big 125-er. She's not the biggest 125-er in the world. There are girls that are bigger. But I feel like in every one of her title fights, she's had the size advantage and the strength advantage. And that wasn't so clear in this fight. No. No, Jennifer Maya Jennifer Maya was big, big and yeah. strong, yeah, dude. The way she absolutely. was controlling her in the clinch in that one round was mm-hmm. very, very impressive. But Valentina is just so sharp. She is. She's just so sharp. I really don't think anybody's really going to out be able to outstrike her for a very no. long time until we maybe get that Amanda Nunes super fight again. But who knows? Is anyone even clamoring for that right now? I think people are more clamoring for that Zhang Wei Lee super fight. I, I definitely am. Fuck. I'd rather see that than Amanda Nunes right now. You know what? I got to be honest with you. So would I. So would I. Mm-hmm. We'll have to see. Which is I mean, so we- weird because I, I love those two fights with Amanda Nunez. And the second one was close. And Valentina yeah. thought she won that one. I it thought would make she for- won it too. Yeah. The first time I watched it a couple times, you know, and then I go, uh, yeah, it's pretty fucking close. <laughs> yeah, it's a close fight. But I mean, nonetheless, like I would still like to see that trilogy. Yeah. It could almost be. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Well, eventually she's going to run out of people to fight. So they're going to have to make that fight eventually mm-hmm. because I really don't think I really think she's even better than all of the 115 pounds. Well, and here here's the thing, man. I mean, when is the strawweight belt going to be defended again? I mean, yeah. it has been well, February, and we were talking we're coming about up on December, January. Yeah, well, we were talking about that fight maybe being on the next pay per view. It hasn't happened yet. Hasn't been announced. No. You know, some things happened on that card. So hopefully, but I doubt it's going to be made. You know, we're only a few yeah, weeks out. Three weeks out from that fight card, and essentially the end of the year card is being rounded out as we speak, so it's probably not happening until 2021, unfortunately. That sucks, because Shevchenko is really running out of people to fight. I mean, who else? I mean, maybe a Caitlin Kukagian rematch eventually, but I mean, I guess she could just keep on racking in these title defenses yeah. over this whole division. I just, I don't see, it. Jessica Andrade. I guess I totally forgot about oh, her. Oh, duh, yeah. Well, that's the clear cut. Cause, I mean, that's the one that Dana White brought up after the fact. Mm-hmm. And that's the one we were talking about last week. I mean, Jessica Andrade. Yeah. Yes. Please. It's the only one. It's the only, it's the only one. one. Yeah. But, I mean, she's more than deserving of it. I mean, she went yeah. out there and, and beat uh, Chikagian, which yeah, was the, the first number round one contender. Starched her. Yeah, yeah, man. So, come on. But, yeah, give her the fight. That's the fight I actually want to see. That'll be a fun one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. And I, I got to be honest with you. I, I think she's got a shot, too. I really do. Yeah. All right. This fight, I feel like I I should have a whole lot to say about this next fight. I'm not. I'm going to save Mike Perry's life, you know. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, he won't be tortured by me on the internet. Mike Perry, Tim Means, Mason. I, mean, I don't think this one fight of the night, but it probably should have. The end of the third round when they were fucking just throwing caution to the wind? Mm-hmm. Insane. Well, that's one thing. Love him or hate him. What Mike Perry does so well is he puts on entertaining fights. And so does Tim Means. I mean, really. Oh, yeah, both of them. Tim Means has been knocked out, but he's also knocked out people. So it's like, you know, both these guys go out there. They put on shows. Love him or hate him. It it doesn't really matter, man. Uh, But as far as Mike Perry, let's talk about Mike Perry a little bit. Because we had talked about this last week. You know, you had brought up the fact that you, you saw him on Instagram. He was eating donuts saying, you know, 
something about it was going to be hard to make weight or ice whatever. Ice cream. Well, he, he'd post videos of him eating ice cream, him eating chocolate chip pancakes, yeah. him eating cake, cupcakes. And then at the same time, his girlfriend went, you got to cut 25 pounds in nine days. What are you doing? And then he's eating shit. Just doesn't give a fuck. And and here's the thing, Tabor. I I mean, let's let's before we jump into it, let's let's be real clear here. Okay. You and I aren't fighters. We've yeah. never cut weight. We will never understand the excruciating amount yeah. of pain it does take to cut weight. You want to know why? Because we're not fucking UFC fighters. We don't plan on being professional athletes. We commentate on the sport, you know, as as fans. So getting that out of the way, you are a professional. Your job is to show up as a professional. And your job is to make weight nine days before you get on a scale and you're posting videos as if you think it's funny, as if you think it's all a fucking joke <laughs> when it's, when it's literally like you're, you're talking about the other guy too. You're talking about the organization as a whole. It's not a good look. It's not a good look at all. You got to take accountability. You got to be smart and you got to be making the weight, man. Well, you and don't, look, bi- you don't bitch about how hard your weight cut was on, on Twitter. No. Especially right before you go make weight. It's not looking good. You guys don't understand. Everybody roasting yeah. me right now. I feel like death right now. Like, yeah, well, you fucking didn't do your shit right. Right. In which, look, I would have, and I really do. Like, I think you need to be a professional, make weight. But I would have much more. And I mean so much more sympathy. I get it. Sometimes bad. there are bad weight cuts, of course. And you, you know what? You, like, you have been on the verge of death. Like, when, when, you're, when you're making these really excruciatingly tough weight cuts, Right. But again, don't don't go nine days before and eat ice cream and eat cake and all this shit, and then say, "Oh, you guys have no idea how hard it is to cut weight." Yeah, as you it's just said, stupid, you gotta do dude. you gotta do the right thing. You gotta do the right thing, man. It's fucking dumb. I'm honestly, I'm like, I'm scared for Mike Perry. I'm not gonna I'm like, maybe I'm just overreacting here, but I really do feel like we're slowly watching the mental breakdown of this man, and it's been happening over the course of these last couple of years. I mean, you got him knocking out this fucking old dude at the bar. You got yeah. him fucking freaking out on his wife on Instagram and stuff like that. Like, just too many public interactions. He had to go to rehab or whatever the fuck he went to, alcohol yeah. treatment or whatever. It's definitely concerning. It's I concerning. Mean, like, yeah. I don't want to see a news story of him fucking beating up his pregnant girlfriend no. one day and then he's in prison. Like, that happens. And that's a dark side of this community that really no one really talks about. I mean, there's been many cases... You know, like the NFL of domestic abuse and stuff like that, and I just I don't want to I don't want to see this happen to a guy that I really really enjoy because I enjoy his fights and I enjoy yeah. his personality. The and man's a character, of course. Real. And and it's such a tough topic to kind of tackle. And, you know, we kind of are spitballing here a little bit. Yeah. But there but there are things like, what is the solution to to dealing with a guy like Mike Perry? Because you're talking about a, an organization that essentially hires these people as private contractors. Yeah, and well and their job is to get fucking punched in the face. Right. Their job is to essentially go out there and get CTE, go get go get brain damage. And it's different than the NFL or anything as far as like organ organizationally because like you're not you're not on a football team ran by a football uh, players union. You know, there are no unions, there are no nothing. So it's like how do you get the proper mental care or, or how do you uh, help someone, you know, that might be going through shit like this? I mean, because we see it too, and it's not just Mike Perry, you know, we've got situations like John Jones as well, you know, going yeah. off, and, you know, and he's quote unquote doing better now, but I mean, this does happen. It is frequent in the sport. It's just like, how do we, how do we help these fighters get, get the care that they need, man? Yeah. And I could be just overreacting. Like the guy yeah. just didn't make weight. And he didn't even try. And he is, like, but it's it's a domino effect, yeah. and it has been many things that we've seen over the past just this year. Right. I mean, just this last six months. So I don't like the road Mike Perry is on right now because if he, I mean, shit, one more fight, even if he gets another one, people were talking about is this guy going to get cut? Dana didn't so didn't Dana didn't say whether or not he was going to cut him or not. He just said, you know what, I really enjoy Mike Perry. I love watching his fights. His fights are super entertaining. We'll see where his future goes. Well, and that's the thing, too. Like, I don't want to cast a dark shadow over Mike Perry either because, again, like, going back to this fight, it was a it was a great fight. It was so entertaining. Like, but I he was clearly like, lost. Yeah, and yeah, he didn't yeah, look yeah, he like this. I mean, he just got, yeah. cle- he got... Well, he got completely outclassed by Tim Means. Well, like, and Tim Means was putting together better combinations. He, looked he was fucking, landing more. He was getting in and out of the pocket. Like, he, looked he, looked looked like, yeah. he looked fantastic, dude. He looked fantastic with those quick, nice straights. He was just popping him yeah. all night and day. 
I just, I, Mike Perry is making me nervous. That's all I got to say yeah, really about that. Yeah, and that's that. understandable, you know, just coming from a fan perspective. Yeah. Uh, like, I get it. Like, because I don't, I don't want to see anyone, even even people I don't like, like, I don't want to see them go off the, the deep end. Like, mm-hmm. I, I want them to be as lucrative as they can in the sport. I want them to have a good life after the fact, you know, so. Mm-hmm. I yeah, totally I just, I just, that. I don't understand, really, because, I mean, let's, I mean, I don't know what he was thinking. He really didn't try. And even Tim Means said about this. He says it's very obvious that Mike Perry just wanted to cut just enough weight to where they still could get this contract Which is to five go through. Pounds. Yeah, and make yeah. the fight. That's all he did. He said he just tried to make just barely make weight so the fight still happened. Didn't want to make weight at all. Didn't even try. Didn't care. Knew he was giving up his money. I, I just don't understand the mindset. I think all. for Tim Means, though, it's kind of nice. He got an extra thirty percent. Yeah, and well, he probably knew he was going to win too. Yeah, so, I mean, let's probably. Fucking, oh, he's like, whatever. I'll just fucking take it, all that extra dough. So we both picked Mike Perry. Yeah. So no, no points for us. Yeah, yeah, it was a great fight. And you picked it. Oh, you picked Jennifer Meyer in the last fight, so I get a point, and you don't. No, I didn't. <laughs> Are you checking There's your notes? No you fucking jackass? way. I ever, it's like I had to check. It. I was like, no, oh I did. Why the fuck would I ever take Jennifer Meyer in that fight? <laughs> it's just insane. The disrespect. <laughs> All right, it is Caitlin true. Chukagian versus Cynthia Calvillo fight. Uh, I predict these things. Yeah. Caitlin Chukagian by decision. I yeah. don't get too many of those. I don't get too many sound bites. So when I do get them, I make use of them. Dude, she looked fantastic. She did. Absolutely fantastic. The way she was popping that jab off, really not letting Cynthia get started. No. Couldn't let her get any combinations off. Was so much quicker. Better on the feet. Had that length, a true 125-er against a girl that used to cut down to 115. It was a clear advantage. There was the very clear advantage. Even 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 on the ground, when the, what, did they go to the ground for, what, 45 seconds? Maybe, yeah. A minute. Didn't last very long. Kaylin Chukagian has showed that she is absolutely a top five flyweight. Mm. She's probably only a fight or two away from getting another title shot. We'll see. We have to wait for this Jessica on draw situation to go through. But Cynthia Calvillo was looking very, very good at 125. When she took out Jessica, I like that yeah. just a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. It's very impressive. It was. So I don't really know what they do with Caitlin. You know, uh, she's in a precarious spot. Man. Yeah, she might just have to keep on fighting these up-and-coming girls. That's the thing. I mean, you kind of have to. You know, I mean, she ha- she ar- she's already lost her opportunity. Um So so who who do we give her? Do we give her a Jennifer Maya coming off that? Coming off that loss to the probably, champ? You probably do that on the same card as an Andrade, Shevchenko type fight. I mean, fight. Uh, Lauren Murphy just got a win, didn't she? I don't remember. I, did I she think get that a, fight did got, got pulled. Didn't they get pulled off a card? I don't There's I too many fucking yeah, yeah, fights. Too many fights. But nonetheless, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what you do with Caitlyn. I don't, I don't know, know either. Dude. I, mean, I think she's just going to have to keep on fighting these up and coming yeah. girls. But dude. there's no one really up and coming. That's the thing. I mean, you, you look at this division right now. And, and uh, Jessica Andrade obviously getting the next shot, okay? And then number two is Caitlin Chikagian. Number three is Jennifer Maya. Maya just lost. She just lost her championship fight. Cynthia Calvillo just beat her. Lauren Murphy sitting at five. I mean, what do you take on a Jessica I after that Calvillo loss? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Who does Caitlin take? Maybe the winner of a Macy Barber versus uh, who's she fighting again? I don't know who Macy's fighting. God, I can't remember her name. I don't know. This is making for a terrible conversation. Either way, I don't know, dude. I don't know. She's just going to have to keep on building her name up because yeah. no one's clamoring for that rematch. Is anybody? No, I'm not. I mean, I, I say she's probably two fights away from being deserving, but I mean, even if, even then, it's like I, I would still say, am taking Chevchenko. Yeah, I would say one fight, man. Honestly, yeah. I'd say one more fight. Like, that's, that's kind of the thing that sucks for Caitlin is it's like, yeah. Who, I, think, who I, so, I think you're right. Jennifer Maya. Yeah. You know, hopefully Jennifer can come back in a good, you know, four or five months. We get that Caitlin Kukagian fight. But Caitlin's staying busy. She just fought six weeks ago. So mm-hmm. she's going to be cranking out these girls. Maybe a Jessica I rematch. She did lose the Jessica I. Yeah. Maybe that is calling for her. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I like that one a little bit better. Because if she can redeem herself against I, she's unquestionably clear-cut the number one contender. Yes. I mean, she's I number so. two right now, but, you know, Andrade gets that shot, and if she loses, then, yeah, you got to go with Caitlin next if she beats uh, Jessica I. Yeah, and she's still young. She's only she 31 is. years old. She's yeah. still improving every still single got fight. got plenty of time. Yeah, absolutely. There's no rush. No. Nope. Absolutely no rush. So the fight bef- that led into this, Mauricio Shogun Rua versus Paul Craig Mason. 
Okay, first and foremost, it was Mauricio, better than the first fight. I'll tell you that. Yeah, Mauricio <laughs> Shogun Rua is a legend of the sport. He is a Hall of Famer. Um, very, very important for the sport. I want to make that clear, clear cut, and concise right away because I mean no disrespect. Uh, talking to him or talking about him, you know what he's been able to accomplish in the in the sport as the light heavyweight champion at one point before John Jones came and took his title. Uh, you know, he's done a lot for the sport. He's been in some awesome fights. Insane. I mean, even back in the Pride days, man, man, you go back to those fights, it is fucking wild. It's bananas. But, you know, the, as as it always sits in the UFC, there is a time. And I, I do feel like in, in most situations, you look at a guy like Mauricio Shogun Rue and you go, he's 38 years old. He's got plenty of time. But, but when you look at his career and the guys he's fought in the wars that he's been in, he yeah he may be thirty eight years old but I, it feels like he's like forty four yeah like well I mean, his I, body I, is just slowing down I was saying that after the Anthony Smith fight he needed to retire mm-hmm. that was what two and a half years ago yeah man and I and I you know again I do not want to disrespect Shogun here because like he has done so much and I've loved all the fights that I've watched him in but reality is reality and I, 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 I he's just done he's just done. Like, I just, I would much rather see him retire right now than to continue on fighting. Uh, I know he was still top 15. I, I'm not really quite sure how, if I'm being honest. I think that's kind of, you know, a uh, legend of the name. sport. Yeah. yeah. It's just which a I get. It, thing. Which I, I get. I'm fine with. I'm fine with it. That's why Anderson Silva was 15. Right. You know? Yep. And, and I understand that. But I think now in Mauricio Shogun's career, I think it is time to retire, man. And, and, You've had a hell of a career. You're a former champ. Like you have nothing to nothing to be upset about. But there does come a time, and I think that time is now. Paul Craig looked great. Paul Craig yeah. uh, was was anything short but dominating this fight, you know. And uh, he j- he just finished the job in the second round. I mean, there's not much more I can say on this fight. Yeah, well, other he tapped than the strikes. I think yeah. I think Mauricio has got to retire. Well, he flattened him out, man. When you flatten mm-hmm. a guy out and you give all that leverage out with those hips. There was nothing Shogun could do. Yeah, nothing he was at fucked. all. He, he was, was just going to sit there and eat damage. Yep, I'm glad it got stopped. Yeah, well, and so am I too. It was definitely a, a reasonable stoppage, and uh, Paul Craig looked phenomenal too. I, I, you know, great fight. Yeah, and we knew if it was going down to the ground, he was going to have the clear advantage. The guy's jujitsu was just absolutely fantastic. I, I wasn't I wasn't looking forward to this fight at all. Not yeah. just because I not, not because I knew Shogun was just going to go in there and eat damage or anything like that. It just I just I didn't think it was going to be a very entertaining fight, no. and I kind of knew it wasn't it wouldn't be it, it kind of did exceed my expectations. It did entertain me as it went on, but like we said before, Shogun is done, and he he, he should have been done several fights ago. I don't think he will be though, unfortunately. And I guess that is my take is I bet you he ends up in Bellator or something like that. Dana White came out and said Shogun needs to retire. And I agree 100% with him. Wholeheartedly, yeah. He, he, might, he might be out of the UFC pretty soon, but I would not be shocked if he gets picked up by a Bellator or 1FC, bare knuckle boxing, something like that. And that's unfortunately where I think he might be going. Yeah. So uh, let's move on to the the prelim main event. Uh, Brendan Moreno versus Brandon Roy Vall. Okay. <clears throat> this fight was amazing, dude. It was a great fight. As, long as, as long as it as lasted. It yeah. Oh, fuck, dude. Brandon Moreno. I love this guy. He's just the embodiment of Mexican style boxing. He goes in there, doesn't give a fuck, throws bombs, absolute bombs for a 125 pounder. Doesn't give a fuck. Goes in there, tries to get and knock everybody out. And Brandon Royval, so quick. Dude, the way he was throwing those strikes, it, he it was the exact opposite. You had a Colby Covington almost with the crazy output, insane output, versus the power shots. And it was an interesting matchup. I was very excited throughout this entire fight. If that shoulder would have held up, I bet you this would have went for three rounds. It would have been amazing yep. fight of the night, possible fight of the year candidate. I'm shocked at how these 125ers are showing out because this was a division for years that nobody gave a fuck about. Everyone said it was boring. Yeah. This fight was not. No, it wasn't at all. And, uh, you know, I'll kind of break this down. Uh, first, Brandon Moreno, he did look very good. Um you know, and and uh, a bright spot on his career, beating a guy like Brandon Royval, obviously going to get the next title shot. Congratulations to Brandon Moreno. I got to say, though, I want to see this fight run back, man. I mean, for the round oh, that really? we got it, absolutely. I mean, not not maybe, I mean, not immediately now because, yeah. you know, 
Figueredo's taking on Moreno. But yeah, I'd love to see this fight ran back. I, I really would. Yeah, I, I thought it was one. such an entertaining one, uh, round one, you know, until literally the very last second, Roy Vall just couldn't do anything with his shoulder popping out. And he wasn't faking that, folks. You can watch the video yeah, of his shoulder. Yeah, he was hard. Yeah, but you watch the video with a coach popping it back, and you can physically see his shoulder pop back into place. Mm -hmm. And it's just such an unfortunate way to lose. And especially when you when you are an up-and-coming guy like Roy Vall. Uh, to, to lose because your shoulder slipped out of place just fucking sucks for the guy. Yeah, with a second left. If he would have lasted that two seconds and they just they popped, probably it, in place, popped it back in. Right in the middle of the corner, yeah. and he he would have came out and fought. He probably would have. He's just a savage like that. But uh, you know, nonetheless, Dana White said also came out and said that you know that's a real shitty way to lose. He goes, I I'm going to throw Brandon in, in into a very uh, high contested fight. You know, someone that's a, a top contender, Most which deserved. I think is what is deserved exactly, which is deserved. As far as Brandon Moreno, congratulations on the win. I'm not taking anything away from you. But I watched your fight with Roy Vall. I watched the fight with Roy Vall with Brandon Moreno. And then I watched Davidson Figueredo dismantle Alex Perez. And I go, ooh, he's got a tall order. Yeah. Like, I know I know Moreno throws caution to the wind. And I respect the hell out of that. And I love watching Brandon Moreno fight. And I told you months ago, I thought it was Brandon, um, Brandon Moreno who should have got the title shot before yeah, Alex Yeah, well, and Perez. he felt disrespected getting passed over. And I sure. totally understand that. And, and he has every right to feel that way. And I mean, no disrespect towards Brandon Moreno, but man, you got a tall order in front of you. Yeah. You got a real tall order in front of you. I mean, Figueredo, uh, geez. Man. Well, if there's anybody in that division right now that I think can, can beat a Figueredo, it's Brandon Moreno. I yeah, thought he, I, just, I mean, I that was essentially, it was, that's the type of hype he had coming into yeah. that Formiga fight. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, fuck Formiga. Yep. I don't know if he can handle Formiga. I don't think he can hang. Fucking fucked him up. Yep. Fucked him up for three rounds. Finished him, I think. I don't remember. I can't really remember that fight, but he did beat him bad. So you never know with Moreno, dude. He is an absolute savage. Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't disagree with that, but... uh I, I just a, don't. Yeah. I don't see how he's going to beat Figueroa. I really order. don't. I really don't. But uh, nonetheless, congratulations to him. He gets that title shot. And you know what, dude? Go out there, prove the world wrong. Prove me wrong. That's what I love about the sport. Is half the time I'm fucking wrong anyway. So. Absolutely. All right. MMA news time, Mason. And it's the biggest news. What did it just break today? Actually, was it today or was it last night? No, it was today. I texted you today. In, in my text literally just said, fuck, <laughs> the bunch of fucking K's, man. Jan versus, Jan, uh, Petra Jan versus Aljamain Sterling is called off. It's not happening. UFC 256 is done. They canceled the whole card. <laughs> they said, wrap this shit up, boys. Like, we're all going it. home for the rest of the year. We are uh, discontinuing this podcast. We said, we're done. Off. <laughs> Said 2021, it's canceled. Bro, for real. Oh, my God. This was the fight I was looking forward to. This is the fight I wanted to see all year. And, of course, of course, this card gets pulled. We don't know when it's – or not the card, but this fight gets pulled. I was joking around earlier about a card. But the fight gets pulled, So and we don't know when it's going to be rescheduled. We're hoping somewhere in, like, you know, February, March maybe. But it's just so disappointing. Like, this is all I was talking about non nonstop all day, but – it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what it was. Personal issues? Yeah, that's all it was for Jan. Petra Jan. I mean, it could be anything. Petter. You know, maybe his dog died. Maybe his mom's got COVID. Fucking, that could be anything. Right, and I, I hope whatever those issues are, like, I, I hope it's, uh, I hope he can get through them, and, and I wish him well, and, you know, all that good stuff. It just, it still sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it just still sucks this card, or this fight is pulled, man. Yeah, I saw. I feel like the card's pulled. But the, the fight, man, like, it just sucks. <laughs> I saw a meme. It was Aljo hyping up the fight yesterday on Instagram, talking about how excited he is, how close he is, and how he's on track to make weight and how everything's perfect, best camp he's ever had. You're rough. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> crying instantly. The crying Jordan meme with Aljo. <laughs> they probably Photoshopped that on his body. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, I mean, well, the shitty thing is because we don't know what it is. We have no idea why. It's like it's so hard to make a prediction of when the fuck this fight will actually happen. No idea. It could be mid-2021. It could be late-2021. Eventually, they're going to have to d make talks of an interim title fight. Does Aljo take an interim title fight in the meantime? If Dude, get the fuck out of here with that intro you might shit. The guy hasn't even have not defended his belt, and they're going to do an intro. No, fuck that. If if that does happen, if that does, which would it be the real belt then? Yes, but 
They'd strip him. But again, you, you also have to give your champ 12 months. I mean, when did Petrion win that belt? Well, that's what I'm saying. They don't like waiting 12 months. That's what the interim title fight's for. They could do maybe, I mean, just who, though? Yeah, but fuck that, dude. Aljamain Sterling versus Corey Sandhagen, too? No. <laughs> interim no. title fight? No. Who's clamoring for that? That's a waste. It's a waste of a fight. Marlon Moraes versus Aljamain no. Sterling, too? <laughs> I mean, I yeah, guess Aljamain Sterling would like to, you know. Yeah, but uh, why? Why take Get one back on it. Yeah, exactly. No. You wait for this fight. You wait for this fight if you're Aljamain Sterling. Because obviously, it's not like the UFC is doing you any favors. It's not like they're going to wait for you or give you another shot anyway. No. You wait on this fight. You do the same thing Gilbert Burns is doing, and you just wait. Yeah. That's that's the only solution here. Because Aljamain Sterling deserves it, and uh, he's not going to get leapfrogged. He's not. Nothing's going to happen. Don't do not do a Tony Ferguson where you try to make weight twice and, and screw up your title shot. Like, I know fighters are fighters, and I respect that, but No. Just sit and wait until Petrion's all better, uh, until whatever is going on is, you know, resolved. Yeah. So that's that's the only, that's that's it, man. That's only it. time will tell, I yeah. guess. So who knows? I guess we just wait. It just sucks. It's a waiting game. Yeah. I fucking hate waiting. It's the worst. So, I mean, what are we going to do with this card? UFC 256 is kind of in a limbo right now. I mean, well, there are talks. Uh, Moreno and Figueredo. But who knows well, both, if that's even going to happen? Yeah, well, I think it will. They both verbally agreed to a fight at UFC 256. Yeah, but that means nothing. That's well, like Conor McGregor verbally agreeing to Dustin Poirier for an exhibition match. Yeah, but like, they're not Conor McGregor. It is It is different in the sense that the businessmen want that fight. They want that fight, dude. They have to have that fight. Something has got to save UFC 256. There's no title fights on there. There's no title fights. You've got to have one. There's, there's one guy I could think of. I could oh. come in and save oh. this card. Oh, El Kukui? That type of guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Well, he is coming in. He uh, wants to fight? Well, I, I think it's all but uh, confirmed? All but confirmed. Yeah. Confirmed? That, yeah, that, yeah, I think they confirmed that fight. Oh, fuck, he's on this card? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, my goodness. Tony Ferguson versus Charles Oliveira. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah. For UFC 256. Oh, my God. I'm just joking. I already know this. <laughs> No, but like what? Seriously though, that you know, Charles Oliveira versus Tony Ferguson—that's like a fight that makes me want to freak out. That's a very, very big fight. It is. I I can't wait. I mean, the jujitsu transitions that we're about to see in this fight in December, hundred percent confirmed for two fifty six. Make that the main event. Fuck you, Moreno. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Figueroa. Fuck you. You're no, co-main. come on, dude. You that's a co-main to a, to- co-main a Tony Ferguson a fight. Have some fucking respect for the belt, God damn it. That's what I said years ago. But they do this kind of shit. Remember Conor McGregor versus fucking Nate Diaz, one. Yeah. Who was the co-main? Who was the Misha co-main? Tate versus Holly Holm? My guy, only okay. the greatest women's fight of all time that until is, the fucking Zhang fight. That is so okay. First and foremost. I get your point, and I hear you out. And you make a you make a point. I'm not going to say it's a good point. But you make a point, right? It's Conor fucking McGregor, all right? That is true. They will bend over backwards, spread their butt cheeks, <laughs> and just say whatever you want, Conor. At least back then, that's how it was, because they didn't know how to manage a mega superstar, and they were trying to bring in the pay-per-views. And this is before, you know, WME took over and all that shit. Now it's a different ball game. You cannot have a title fight as a co-main and then throw Tony Ferguson and Charles Charles Oliveira on the main. You just can't do it. You can't do it. If anything, I think Tony Ferguson and Charles Oliveira should be a main event of a fight night. I think that would make more sense. But yeah, dude, you can't you can't fucking co-main that. You Tony Ferguson that. is a pay-per-view fighter. So I understand why he has to be on this card. But 3 rounds isn't enough. That's a 5-round fight, Mason. That is a five round fight if they've ever made one. Every fight, every fucking Tony Ferguson fight needs to be a five round fight. They're just in this shitty area where he has no belt and he needs to be a fucking pay per view fighter. Yeah. It's because he brings in eyeballs. Let's get real. El Kakui brings in the eyeballs. It's not the most eyeballs in the world, but it's pretty fucking good for the lightweight division. I say make that main event. But you know what? There's one person that, I mean, as good as that fight is, and I can't wait for that fight. It's not the fight we wanted. What the fuck happened with Michael Chandler? I guess the UFC has plans for him, but it's just like, what are the, what are the plans here? You know, uh, we'll, we'll jump into this because it does have to do with it. You know, Habib did break his silence. He said, look, I'm not coming back. 
It's not happening. I told you, jackasses, I'm not coming back. I said I was retired. I'm staying retired. All right. Look, I know we have until January to figure out this whole thing. But I'm telling you right now, I would not be surprised if the UFC, two or three weeks out from January 23rd, because now Connor and Dustin have been confirmed, right? I wouldn't doubt if the UFC came out two or three weeks ahead of time and said, oh, Habib relinquished his title. This is for the new title, right? This is for the new light, lightweight champion of the world, okay? Boom, win or loser doesn't matter. The question is, what do we do with Michael Chandler? So now we have Tony Ferguson versus Charles, Charles Oliveira, right? Winner of that, I don't care who it is, is not getting the next title shot. It sucks and it's bullshit, but they're not going to. So this sets up the perfect title, title spot solution. You have Michael Chandler versus Justin Gaethje, probably January or February. No. I say you got Michael Chandler versus Gregor Gillespie. Michael Chandler versus Drew Dober. Michael Chandler versus Islam Makachev. Fuck you, Michael Chandler. Oh That's essentially God. what I'm trying to say. Dude, you just gave away your number one contender fight. You wanted this fight. It's the fight I ever wanted. You done fucked up. I don't want to hear this shit about if the UFC had different plans, man. That's the fight anyone ever wanted. Okay, how about this? Unless he comes out and There's says he was guy. never offered. Right. You know, unless he comes out and says, I never got offered that. I don't know why you guys are mad at me. But for right now, I really, I, I mean, in my head, he negotiated his way out of this fight. He doesn't want to fight. He said, no, I want to fight you on the January 23rd card, Tony. And Tony's like, no, I'm fighting December 12th. And if you don't fight me on December 12th, you're a fucking chump and you're never going to fight me. That's essentially what Tony Ferguson said. Boom, Olivier. Yeah, fight but I take, the side of my, I, I take the side of Chandler on this. Again, he just had a weight cut a couple weeks ago, man. Yeah, but that and was... to take a fight on December 12th, why not wait till January 23rd for that? Over eight weeks. I mean, it's got to be, what, seven, eight weeks? From what, UFC 254? Since, since 254, since he made weight. Yeah, it's been a little while, but I mean, you still have to go through a full training camp. I mean, you don't understand the pressures of coming in from a different organization and having your first fight. I do not blame Michael Chandler for wanting to represent the best fighter he could possibly be in his very first fight in the UFC. I would never be taking short notice fights. Not my first fight. You have to set the tone. Like, what if he goes out there on a five-week camp and gets starched? He, he loses all credibility. He will, he, it will take him years to rebuild his name because he lost one fight and he took it on short notice. That is why Michael Chandler is being smart here. I'm not sitting here defending the guy. Like, I think he'll probably end up being a heel in the lightweight division, right? And I think there's going to be a lot of people who probably won't like him, like for whatever reason. But dude, I understand his point. Like, he wants a full training camp and I don't blame the guy and I think he fucking deserves it. I really do. Like, he doesn't want to get starched in his first fight. I don't there think is, he deserves jack shit, to be honest. How? Let's be fucking real. I don't think he deserves a top five opponent. Really? Yeah. Man, you've changed 100%. your tone on this quite a bit. Yeah, well, fuck, he should have taken the Tony fight. That was his golden goose. That was his one guy. But again, I keep going back to it. You want him to take that fight on short notice after making weight, what, just a few weeks ago? Yes. Yeah, it's just, that's unreasonable. Paul Felder just fought RDA on a five days notice and made 155. Okay, but and he again, didn't he didn't make weight six weeks of, of had a time. But again, we're yes. talking about a Paul Felder who has been established in the UFC, who has been known to being game his whole life, who was training for a triathlon and had nothing to lose and everything and to gain and, with and that And we're fight. talking about and it's been proven because he lost five rounds. And if anything, he's going to get a number or he'll get a high contender fight. So he had nothing to lose there. Michael Chandler, this is something you're not understanding. Paul Felder had nothing to lose by losing that fight. If Michael Chandler were to take a last minute fight and lose against Tony Ferguson, he loses everything yeah everything. well he loses everything against anybody off this one fight because he doesn't deserve a top five opponent coming in off a one fight win streak over benson henderson right i get that and he lost he, a pit bull before that right yeah but he was a champion over in bellator a multiple time champion yeah I, we'll see so i just i mean i, 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 mean, I get your point i understand just engage he went into a top five fight from an outside organization but he was 18 and 0 mm-hmm you know, Michael Chandler's had some losses and stuff. He did lose to Pitbull. He, then he knocked out Benson Henderson in the first round. Like, good for you, dude. I, I don't think he deserves this top five fight. I was totally all up for it because he was in the mix. He was making this stuff happen. He was a backup to fucking Habib, but it's now it's like he's just 
he's stalling and waiting, and so I don't then, I don't like that. I want fighters yeah. to come in and fight. Maybe it's Michael Chandler, Dan Hooker, Justin Gaethje versus Rafael Dos Anjos. Maybe that's it. I think that's more deserving. Michael Chandler does not deserve Justin Gaethje right off the bat. I'm sorry. I don't know why. I mean. I was in it because it was it was a wrench thrown in the lightweight division, and we're all talking. Habib is retiring. I was all for Michael Chandler getting a big fight, but now it's like now you're just fucking tickling my balls, dude. I don't like these teases. <laughs> just fight, please. Yeah, but we put up with it with with certain fighters. Yeah, like a, like a Connor. No, well, I don't. Where he tickles your balls for fucking. I don't fuck Connor. Yeah, like like let's be real. For especially for that, like game two of your season is twelve months later, motherfucker. Like, come on, bro. But anyways, I, I, we'll see. We'll see. I don't think Michael Chandler deserves the top five. I'm sorry. Like Dan Hooker, I guess. Why not do that fight? I don't think he deserves Justin Gaethje, and I, that might be what he's waiting for. Probably. I think that's, that's my what guess. it is. I mean, that's the. I only... think he matches up well with uh, Gaethje. Do I think he beats him? I don't know. That's a tough order, but uh, I think I think he matches up well with uh, Justin. Well, why wait? I mean, really, like, why wait unless he thinks that's the fight they're going to make eventually? Yeah. If, they really, if they really didn't think he had a chance for that fight, they would probably would have taken the Tony fight on mm -hmm. December 21st right. or 12th or whatever it is. So I guess when you make a point like that, I guess it kind of makes sense. But, man, I just want to see a fight. I'm just sick of this hype. <laughs> I, I feel gotta that. See it. Hey, I got to see that. it. Yeah. You know, I we got to see it eventually, right? Yeah, eventually. Eventually. All right, let's talk about this. Anderson Silva was released from his UFC contract. Uh, he is no longer a fighter in the UFC organization. How do you feel about it? It's normal. Yeah, I'm honestly happy, bro. I'm happy. I just I, what would make me happier is if he came out and said, "I'm retiring from combat sports," because that's what needs to. That's happen. what needs to happen. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I can almost guarantee you he goes and takes a boxing fight. Or a kickboxing fight, something like that. I wouldn't be opposed to him like like doing a sug tournament or something like that. You know, no, that's great. Like that Call Chael Sonnen, mm -hmm. do a Chael Sonnen fucking rematch yeah. submission, submission underground, underground in Portland. Yeah, that would be fantastic. That'd be awesome. That'd I be would something go. I'd love to see. Yeah, yeah, I'd go. I'd go. I'd lick the mats if I fucking had For to. Sure. Fuck Rona, you know. At that like, rate, yeah, yeah, I'll take my chances. <laughs> I can I'm watch seeing that. Submission that. Underground? Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing that. That'd be amazing. So why not do stuff like that? I don't want to see him in combat sports. No, not at 46. I'm good. Like we're past that. You know, I, I will always go back and watch Anderson Silva's fights. Like he, he is a fucking legend of the sport. And like for people who don't know Anderson Silva, go back and watch his reign in the middleweight division. It is, it is uh, literally like, it's, it's like watching Israel out of Sonya for the next five or six years and how dominant he is. Like, that's how, that's how Anderson Silva was in his prime, just starching some of the best in the, of the best in, in the game. Anderson Silva is a legend, a Hall of Famer. And, uh, but, you know, it is time. It, it's 45, 46. He's got to retire. Yeah, it's a, few, it's a few years too late. So I'm glad it's happened. That just yeah. means for sure it will not be happening. In At least in the gone. UFC, and that's yeah. good. Yeah, but good news for this December 19th card, which is getting more and more ridiculously stacked. Yes, it is. By the moment. Jose Aldo versus Cheeto Vera is confirmed and on that card to round off the end of the year card. I fucking love this fight. Dude, I love this I card. love this fight. Oh, yeah, let's talk about the card, too. But this fight in particular, after Cheeto Vera coming off that win against Sugar Sean O'Malley, you got Jose Aldo obviously coming off the loss to Petrion. This makes the most sense, man. This this fight is going to be fun. It's going to be entertaining. These dudes are going to throw. Yes. They're going to throw. My only harp about or my only gripe about this fight is the fact that it's not going to be five rounds. Because I'd love to see a five round be a war between these guys. Yes, it like, would be. Seriously, a it, would it would be, be a, a war. war. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so incredibly excited about this fight. Yeah, Cheeto's coming to bang. You know that. Yeah. And Jose's just as dangerous as he always was. Yep. Yeah, he doesn't have the gas tank that he used to have. But if he takes out Cheeto early, which is something he needs to do, like, let's be real, when these fights of his go into these later rounds, he tends to gas. If he could start taking people out in the first and second round, he will be very dominant, especially at this 135-pound division. It's a very interesting fight. I think Cheeto might ascend to the top of this division after this fight. He's going to be clamoring for a title shot with a big win over Jose Aldo. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, it would be, it would throw him right in the mix too, man. I mean, right in the mix of this division. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Dude, this card is f just ridiculous. Every time I look at it, Leon Edwards, Hamzat Chemaev, fucking uh, 
Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Jeff Neal, Jose Cheeto, Bilal Muhammad, Marlon Marais, Rob Font, just names. Chaos Williams versus Michelle Pereira. Like, that fight alone is fucking ridiculous. Greg Hardy's back. They're going out with a bang in December 19th, Mason. What a oh, way to yeah. end the year. Absolutely. What a way to end the year. Oh, I almost moved on from our MMA news segment without bringing it up. And I can't believe. I can't believe we didn't even talk about it. We're, we're rounding the year out with this December 19th card, but we're starting the year off even stronger with a great main event, Mason, that just got announced. Max Holloway versus Calvin Cater. Oh, duh, that's right. I can't believe I didn't think about that. You know what's so funny, too, is I was, uh, you know, when we were talking about Calvin Cater, I won't I won't forget this. So you were like, yeah, I think it'd be a great matchup, him and Max Holloway. And I was like, mm-hmm. come on, bro. Max ain't going to take that fight. But then Calvin Cater went out there and fucking uh, put on a hell of a performance. And then I was like, okay, maybe. Well, that's the fight they ended up going with. I like it, man. I do like it now. I wasn't on board initially, but after watching Calvin Cater's last performance, I mean, uh, uh, Dan Ige, right? Yeah, he's the best. Easily, Calvin Cater, I think, has some of the best boxing in the entire division, other than Max Holloway. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Honestly, very excited, excited for this fight. fight. It's going to be a very interesting, striking matchup. I can't wait. They're going to bang, I think. like They're both going to use their hands. That's what they want to do. They want to stand and box. They're going to trade. I can't fucking wait for that fight. And it's a very, very interesting matchup because Calvin Cater, if he can beat Max Holloway, not only will he be the, be the, the very best boxer in the entire division, but... Max Holloway probably beat Volkanovski in that second fight. He will mm-hmm. be clamoring for that instant title shot. We don't know when that Brian Ortega fight's going to happen, but if you beat Max Holloway, you're getting the title shot. Absolutely. Afterwards. And not only that, too, but, I mean, it would even be more of a case for Max Holloway if he goes out there and beats Calvin Cater. And if Brian Ortega was to win that belt, I mean, no, I, they're, they're, they're I'm making counting, that rematch. I'm not counting Alexander Volkanovski out. And just because Brian Ortega had one really great fight in this comeback fight, I look, hey. Alexander could very well win that fight. But Absolutely. I'm just saying, hypothetically speaking, if Brian Ortega were to win that belt, and then, you know, Max Holloway, they've already fought one time, and Max starched him. But to see that rematch, I was telling you. I was telling you, I want to see that rematch so bad. Mm. I want to see Brian Ortega 2.0 against Max Holloway. Yeah, it's an interesting. I want to see that rematch, man. It's very so interesting. It, it would, it, uh, the cards may be, or the stars may be aligning, so they say. Absolutely. I want to talk about one other thing in MMA news. It's not really news. I just want to talk about hypotheticals for you right now, okay? And we are specifically talking about the bantamweight division. Obviously, January 2021, there is a top contender in this division who is coming off of a two-year suspension uh, for you know using EPOs because he's a fucking cheater. But uh, that is TJ Dillashaw. Yeah. Where where is he in the mix? I don't know. His bandmate division. I don't know. I think he deserves a top five opponent right off the bat. As do I. I mean, he is a cheater. But he's still still a former champ. But he's a former champ, and he's a hell of a fighter. Look, whether or not he was taking EPOs his whole career, we'll never know that. I mean, Cody Garbrandt can come out and say these things, but we don't really know, right? But what we do know for a matter of a fact is he did take it to fight Henry Cejudo in that flyweight championship, and it didn't help him out too much. The fight everyone was saying. Well, Well, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it was called early. Yeah. yeah. But I think when it comes to TJ Dillashaw, okay, look, people make mistakes, and I'm not saying forget, but, like, I'm willing to move past it as long as USADA continues to test him, as long as we find out that, you know, he's clean. Yeah, it's always going to be a stain on your career. It's always going to be a stain on your mark, but we can always move forward from it. Like, look, we're MMA fans. We get over shit, you know? Mm-hmm. We're, not the, we're not, you know, these fucking Twitter warriors who pull up a tweet from 10 years ago and go, fuck this guy, cancel him. So, like, look, yeah, he cheated, EPOs, that sucks. But I'm, like, I, 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 I've just got to be honest, I'm excited to have him back. I'm excited to see TJ. I mean, he's he is one of the best fighters in the bantamweight division, un, uh, unquestionably. I think he's going to make for a great heel in this division, and I think he'll probably bring some uh, some publicity back to the bantamweight division in a way that we haven't seen in a few years with yeah. him out. Yeah. He's going to be talking a lot of shit. He's not going to give a fuck. Everyone's going to call him a cheater, and he's just going to be he's going to wear it, you know, like wearing that snake on his shirt. Like he's yeah. just going to lean into it. He's going to be the heel that no one's going to like. But dude, don't underestimate TJ Dillashaw. Dude, are you are, are you seeing these pictures of him online? Jacked. He looks jacked. He's shredded, in the tits. Dude. He's he looks a- in the best shape he ever has looked in his career. 
I'm just yeah. saying. We, we you could, saw it as there every day. Right. But we could be seeing a TJ Dillashaw that could very well win back the belt. Yeah, oh, yeah, dude. I mean, I wouldn't very be shocked well. if they went Corey Sanhagen, you know, or even a media title shot. Who knows? You know Marlon who I'd Marais. like to see him fight? Frankie Edgar. Yeah. At number five. That's what I'd like to see right away. Yeah, well, Frankie's waiting for a fight. He's not going to fight Marlon Marais. They're sparring no. partners. They're main guys. They're good friends. Exactly. Maybe Cody Garbrandt. Frankie Edgar, it's really, it's Corey Sanhagen for him, or it's TJ Dillashaw. Yeah. I mean, they were talking. Who knows if that happens, but they were saying Sugar Sean O'Malley versus TJ Dillashaw. Fuck out, I don't know man. why the fuck they would Bro, ever want to make okay. that. For a salty... As Sugar Sean O'Malley was after le- losing to Cheeto Vera. Could you imagine how salt... This dude would exude salt. I mean, it would be like a Sodom and Gomorrah thing where he turns around and he turns into a pillar of fucking salt. I'm serious, dude. If he lost to TJ Dillashaw, you know his podcast for dude, two hours. Dude, he was on again. EPOs. Dude, he was on EPOs. He was cheating. He I'm was better than him. That. He's going to be a journeyman. If he's, man, if he's even half as salty as he was after losing to Cheeto Vera, he's going to be even more salty losing to fucking TJ Dillashaw. Don't put that fight. Look, Sean Sugar Sean O'Malley is going to be like I'm joking around a little bit, but you know Sugar is going to be a future superstar of the UFC. We all know it. You know yeah. if he can keep his head on straight, if he doesn't you know get too big of a head, and he actually goes out there and continues to win fights, he's going to be a superstar. The kid's marketable. Yeah. Don't give him a guy like TJ. Not no. coming off a loss. But I think if you want to kill a worst, superstar, yeah. you fucking give him TJ Dillashaw. Exactly. Because dude, I'm telling you, like his his little rainbow head is going to explode. Oh, fuck. Like, if he loses that fight, like, he's just going to have, you know, excuse after excuse, and people are going to rail on him, man, because people don't like that shit. No, people like, are already railing on him pretty hard over well, this shit. And, like, I don't like I don't blame him. Like, if he were to say, and I say this every time, if he were to say, hey, look, he got the better of me that night, but I feel like I'm the better fighter, I can respect that. I can respect the hell out of that. But, but to literally lose in the first round and to lose pretty... Uh, Pretty right there in your yeah, face, convincingly. right? Convincingly. And then to go and say, oh, he's a journeyman, he sucks. It's like, bro, have a little have a little humility. I mean, you just fucking clearly lost that fight, man. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't know. I really don't like it. I really don't like it at all. Uh, and I think that'd be the worst thing in the world if TJ Dillashaw were to take, or not hit TJ to take the fight, but if they were to match, have Sugar Sean O'Malley and TJ fight, that'd be awful. I like the Pedro, or I, uh, Pedro Munoz would be a great fight, but I like the Frankie Edgar fight as well. Yeah, it's weird. We are getting very close to the end of the year, but we have not heard anything. Nothing. Nothing from his camp, nothing no. from the UFC either. The last article was October 30th, and that was just basically a little tiny article about his latest tweet, which was he looked jacked. Interesting. Training. Training Interesting. with a bunch of guys. So. I wouldn't be shocked if they don't have a number one contender. Say Aljamain Sterling chokes out Yawn quickly. Wouldn't be shocked. They just go Aljamain Sterling, uh, TJ Dillashaw, yeah. first title defense. Absolutely. And I would fucking buy it. That's a big one. Preview show time, Mason. Curtis Blades, Derek Lewis, UFC Fight Night Vegas. Are you excited for this main event? Because I'm not going to lie. I don't think it's going to be the most entertaining main event we've ever seen. Well, Tabor, <laughs> that's, I don't that's, think too many. High expectations. Wow, what a hot take, Tabor. <laughs> what a hot take. Um, you know, nothing against Curtis Blades or Derek Lewis. I just don't think they match up well together. Yeah. Derek I, Lewis stands and bangs. Curtis Blades will take you down and ground and pound you. 100%. I agree 100% with I don't you. understand what they were doing. I don't understand what they were doing with this matchup. I, I guess hate there was no matchup. one else for either guy to fight. Yeah, I just That's really it. what it is. I mean, this heavyweight division, everybody's fought everybody yeah, already. I know. I know. I know. But it's like... This, this fight just makes no sense to me. I mean, you know, I'd, I'll, I'll just jump right into it. Curtis Blades is obviously a huge favorite, and deservedly so. I mean, the mm-hmm. guy can take down anyone in this division, and he can beat you to a pulp. He can knock you out, too. I mean, well, he fucking yeah. stood and banged with JDS and then KO'd him exactly. in the first round. But I think that's where Derek Lewis actually has the advantage, because I'm telling you right now, if Curtis Blades sat there and stood with JDS for a while and was like, you know, feeling comfortable, it only takes one shot. We saw it. We saw it when he goes three full rounds of getting dominated against Alexander Volkov. And then, boom, the last 60 seconds, he knocks him out, Mm -hmm. man. Come on. Come on, folks. I mean, like, it's Derek Lewis. He touches you one time, and your your lights can go out. But the question is, is Curtis Blades going to give him that opportunity? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I think Curtis Blades takes him down right away. I think he, he tires him out the first round. I think he gets the job done in the second round. I'm going... Curtis Blade, second round TKO, baby. All right. And I hate I hate to count out the Black Beast. 
Yeah, you really can't do. ever count out the Black Beast. He's you a can't. fucking beast for you a reason. Can't. And that's his nickname, folks. But Absolutely. So it's just like... Racist! Yeah, I know. I do. That's his nickname. But, like, I mean, you don't want to count out Derek Lewis. Like, you really don't. Like, and this guy can knock out anyone at any time. And I love Derek Lewis. I fucking love this I guy. I love My him. My balls is hot. He's you know, the he's best, just hilarious. Dude. His he's, Instagram is the best. He's 110% organic. Like, just, he is who he is. And I love watching him fight. And, and if he wins this fight, I'll be ecstatic for him. I really will. I also love Curtis Blades, too. So it's just like, it is what it is. I just think, you know, at the end of the day, I think Curtis Blades gets the job done pretty decisively. Yeah. I mean, is the, is Derek Lewis the biggest heavyweight Curtis Blades has ever faced? Probably. Yeah. He's a big motherfucker. Has to he cut has weight boy. to 265. Yep. So Derek Lewis has been shocking us with his cardio lately. This is a five-round matchup and in Curtis Blade's last five round matchup against Volkov he was gassed after what the second round yeah but he was still dominating on top in top mm-hmm. position wasn't letting anybody get up it was not entertaining at all it was pretty smothering on the ground pretty yeah. much a lot of laying on top of each other some ground and pound mixed in here and there and the ground and pound is vicious it is vicious it just doesn't make for a very entertaining matchup. I agree with you, Mason. I think Curtis Blades is going to take Derek Lewis down a majority of this fight. And unfortunately, it'll be enough to win three rounds. Maybe Derek Lewis finds a way to get back up and two of them, piece him up a little bit. But I just I, I don't see Derek Lewis winning a decision, Yeah, especially. If he wins, it has to be by knockout, I feel like. And early, mm-hmm. probably. Yeah. I agree. I just don't see it happening. I'm going Curtis Blades unanimous decision. It's going to be a pretty boring main event, unfortunately. Okay. All right. We'll talk about this co-main. You know, there was a lot of confusion initially going into this fight card Mm -hmm. uh, for us in the in the pre-show before we actually started because Renato Renato Moicano versus Rafael Fizayev. That's as close Fizev? as I'm going to get. Fizev? 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 I practiced it before and then I butchered it, so fuck me. Uh, but nonetheless, that was supposed to be the co-main. I guess uh, Moicano uh, tested positive for COVID-19. That fight just got pushed back to UFC 256. That'll be a fun fight for that card. Yes. Uh, so headlining the, or excuse me, co-maining this fight is now Anthony Smith versus Devin Clark. I'll break this down for you a little bit. Anthony Smith... Uh, you know, it's it's been a rough year, not just yeah. for Americans, but also for Anthony Smith. You know, he he's lost a couple fights now. Uh, he's had someone break into his home, threaten to almost kill his family. Luckily, yep. he wrestled him and, and got this fucking cokehead or messed up guy. Yeah, and he's I, got, I don't. He, I don't he's have got a, some fucking other cokehead messed yeah. up guy tweeting at him about it. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> That jackass, <laughs> fucking piece of um, shit. But man, I, I'm telling you right now, like I I, I just. I hate to bet against Anthony Smith, but I think at this point, I got to go with Devin Clark here. Really? Yeah, I really do. You think uh, it's the start of the uh, eventual end? I do. I think it's, a, I, from what I've seen in the last couple fights, yeah, I do. I think it's the end of Anthony Smith. Uh, and, and and again, like, I don't mean the end. That That's kind of, I need to take that statement back a little bit because it's not the end of Anthony Smith. I just don't see him ever fighting for a belt again. I don't see, you don't I see think, him being a top contender. Right. I do, now, do I think, oh, he should retire right now? No, absolutely mm-hmm. not. There are guys who can still fight in the organization who aren't going to be champions. I don't think like he's past his prime, he should retire or anything like that. That's a fucking absurd. But what I will say is I think there's a lot of up and coming guys who look real fucking good mm-hmm. look real good and uh, i think you know as the as the sport evolves i think these guys start catching up and start becoming better and younger and more more youthful i mean let's keep in mind i mean how many fucking fights has anthony smith had it's been 50 fights it's pretty close to 50 pretty fights, close man. it's like 48 yeah 49 so it's like, fights you know that 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 eventually wears on your body like it does. So for me, I, I got to go Devin Clark here. I think Devin Clark, uh, I think he'll win it decision. So that's my pick. All right. I'm sticking with Anthony Smith. I just think he, you know, yeah, he he did have a rough year so far. But look at who it was too. Glover Teixeira and Alexander Rakic. And there's, a, there's. There's no disrespect thrown at you for losing those fights. No, absolutely. Like not. that's those are fucking up and coming. Sa- I mean, not Glover. He's not up and coming at all. But <laughs> yeah. Rakic is an up and coming savage, and Glover is just looking like he like as good as he's ever really looked on the ground. Yeah, dominant. 
and smothering. So I still think Anthony Smith could be a top guy. Is he a top 15 guy? Absolutely. Is he a top mm-hmm. guy? A top 10 guy? Absolutely. Is he a top five light heavyweight contender at this moment? No. Yeah, that's where it starts getting dicey for me as top five. And I don't know if he ever will be one ever again, but I do think he will be one of these gatekeeper type guys to where if you want to be an mm-hmm. elite fighter at this 205-pound division, you have to beat Anthony yep. Smith. And I still think he's good enough to hang with these guys that are just yeah. complete savages Absolutely. like a Devin Clark. So I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Anthony Smith decision. I think he's just going to pull out every savvy vet move to prove that he is still elite in this division and to prove he is still a name not to mess with. Okay. So uh, we'll talk about this heavyweight fight real quick. We got jo- uh, Josh Parisian versus Parker Porter. So For some Josh, reason, I feel like Parker Porter is like a... a uh, Peter Parker? Pigs in a blanket type of restaurant, you know? Like Just because he's fat, Mason, that's waffle. disrespectful. Oh, is he really fat? <laughs> oh, yeah. Parker he's Porter? a big boy. Oh, he's, he's, like, he's like five foot nine, 290 oh, pounds. Oh, jeez. Yeah, joking. Parker Porter. <laughs> Just me out there fighting a heavyweight and knocked out. <laughs> yeah, but no. Uh, yeah, Parker Porter. I've never heard of this guy. I think it's his, he had one UFC fight. In his career, and it was a loss or something like that. Josh Prezen had a is a contender series guy. He just came off the series contender guy. series, got a first yeah. round knockout. So, you know, I don't know either of these guys. I've never seen a fight. I have no idea what their skill sets are going to be. I just assume they're both fluffy and they both want to stand and bang, and they're both going to get gassed after the first two minutes. I'm going Parisian first round KO. Hopefully, he gets the KO before the gas tank empties. Yeah, you know, from what I've seen, he took on former. Uh, uh, Bengals wide receiver Chad Johnson in the Contender Series fight. That's a terrible joke. Shut up, really? I was like, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I was it, like, his, Ocho his Cinco? No, yeah. No, but he did fight a Chad Johnson. Uh, he did knock him out. But, dude, I, I was just taking a look at Parisian's uh, resume here. You know, he's 13-3, and three, 10 wins by KO, 2 by submission, 1 by decision. Yeah, one he's fight a finisher. by decision. He is a finisher, uh, and he knocks a lot of guys out. Over the last six fights straight, he has had a KO or TKO. Uh, I think this man is dangerous, and I'm going to go Josh Parisian first round knockout. All right, same as you. So this next fight, my guy, these are like two of my favorite fighters of all time. I've followed these guys their entire careers. Yes, you have. is a Zumadov Gulgulov, and Amir. <laughs> I mean, the last his name. I mean, I'll. I mean, I mean, we make jokes, but like that's how you say his Al-Bazi. name. Al Bazi. Zumagulgulov, and then Amir Al Bazi. Zumagulgulov. Zumagulgulov. Kazakhstan. So Kazakhstan. I got roasted on our fight companion for thinking Kazakhstan was a real country. Isn't it? Cash is like that place is fucking <laughs> fake. Well, here's a guy from Kazakhstan. Cash. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking real. Man, just, you just, just don't not even that. You don't let go of the no, grudges, nothing, do you? <laughs> everything. Make me look like an idiot on my podcast, eh? <laughs> just can't handle it, eh? Just pissed, blown up. Oh, God. Uh, no, but I, I've never heard of this guy, Zuma Golgov. No, nor have I. I think we've, I've seen him fight before because I know his face. He looks like... Uh, this is going to be he's real. He's got a punchable gonna, face. No. He, oh. <laughs> dude, he looks like he's got a Neanderthal's face. Like, straight up looks like a caveman. He's got a caveman face against Amir Abulbaz. I've never oh, heard of this. <laughs> I don't know. It's just Ablis. fucking disrespectful. Ablis. I mean, I call, I, I've been calling Hamzat Shemaya the Hamzat for the last yeah, fucking Yeah, people get pissed at you for that, Hamzat, bro. they're like, there's they a, not an up. M in front of the Z. Whatever. Yeah, no, it's Hamzat, right? Yeah, it's Hamzat. Yeah, Hamza. yeah I, I don't know either of these guys. I'm going to go Abeliz, unanimous decision. I, I've seen Zuma Glogov fight before and he's a wrestler he's a pretty good wrestler but i just don't think he's going to be good enough to take up all eats down well yeah okay so uh yeah i'm gonna go amir ablizi too uh i'm gonna go <laughs> uh no dude i went zuma google glove i'm gonna go zuma google glove <laughs> Decision. We are, this is might be the most unprofessional podcast we've ever done. Uh, I'm gonna go Zuma Google Glove. Zuma Google Glove. Well, it's like well the name with like the name We're like Zuma. The, Google. Google. the name. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, I'm gonna go Zuma Glove. Like go, fuck it, that guy. <laughs> the caveman. What's the caveman's name from the Geico commercials? That's no what that idea. guy's name yeah. is. Uh, All right, let's get Miguel down to these next. Miguel versus <laughs> Tashi yeah. Sato. This is going off the rails. Let's get to these next two picks real yeah, quick before my, we show our, <laughs> our complete and utter ignorance for this card. 
<laughs> well, it's it's a thing, man. I don't know these. It is. Well, I mean, wait, yeah, and not only that, but they've not really fought. They haven't fought in the UFC. Yeah. Like one of them has had one fight in the UFC. So I mean. Yeah. Sue us. Yeah. Okay. Miguel Baeza, nine and yes. zero against Takashi Sato. Both these guys, absolute savages. Takashi Sato, Japanese savage. Baeza, American savage. I, I, I don't know who you really give the advantage to. Baeza looks very dangerous, very very dangerous. But Undefeated Takashi, fighter too. Yeah. And, but Takashi Sato is a guy that you can never count out, and he seems to impress, especially lately in his last few fights. So, <clears throat> Baeza, second round TKO. It's going to be a great fight. This is a possible fight of the night right there. Absolutely yeah, uh, his, his last fight, he knocked out uh, Matt Brown in the second round, mm -hmm. too. Uh, Miguel Baeza. Uh, you know, Sato Sato is is kind of a win one, lose one. You know, he lost against Bilal Muhammad, uh, came back and beat Jason, Jason Witt. Uh, but, uh, again, I think Miguel Baeza, I got to go with the undefeated fighter here at 9-0. and oh. It's kind of yeah. hard to go against that record. He's looking very dangerous. He is. I'm going to go second round KO. Alrighty. Spike Carlisle, Bill Algeo. Spike Carlisle, if you don't remember. What was, what's his nickname again? The ginger something? The alpha yeah. ginger. Yeah. The alpha ginger Spike himself. Carlisle. Laying yeah. out in the middle of the fucking uh, entrance of the hotel, butt ass naked on the streets, that just letting the sunlight like come in. He's a crazy person. Yeah. Absolute psychopath. And he fights like one too. Mm -hmm. Dude, barraging in the first round, blowing his load like no other, going for the KO. You do that against Bill Algio, it's going to be a rough night for you, my guy. Uh, yeah. But I mean, Spike Carlisle is such an entertaining fighter. I mean, I remember that Billy Corntillo fight. That was a fun fight. That was fight. a very fun fight. That was a fun fight. So it's like, it's one of those things where, uh, yeah, it should be an interesting fight. We'll see We'll see how this yeah. goes down. What's your pick, Tate? Uh, I'm going Algeo, second round TKO. I think he finds a way to weather the storm throughout that first round, throughout that burst, throughout oh. that blowing of his load. And he's going to find a way to make it work in the second. Dude, he's a very dangerous fighter. He's super long and lengthy for 145 pounds. I don't know what weight class this is. It should be 145 pounds. It might be a 150 or 155. I wouldn't be shocked. Spike Carlo is a very, very big and thick featherweight. So I don't know. I don't know. We will see. But Bill Algeo is so dangerous. He's very long. Very lengthy. has knees and elbows from everywhere in every angle. Bill Algeo. Second right. round TKO. He's going to be too dangerous. I got to go with the crazy man, Spike Carlisle. Uh, I'm going to go second round KO. Alrighty, Interesting. It's that time, Mason. It is. Shout outs. Go ahead. My shout outs is to our YouTube comments section. Guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, go down to the comment section. Leave a comment. If you do, you could get shouted out at the end of the show. So my shout out is to Matt Chase. I pray Ferg gets this fight. I mean, I don't see why not. Chandler has been asking for him for like a month, so you know he's down to fight Tony. It's just a matter of whether the UFC can muster up a contract they both agree on and find them a card before the year's end, keeping my fingers crossed. Well, I'm sorry, my guy. Unfortunately, he's fighting Oliveira. To be honest, that might be a better fight. Yeah, it might be. It might be a way more entertaining one. Very well could be. Especially if it goes down to the ground because who knows what happens in that Brazilian jiu-jitsu transitions. It's just, it's so insane. It's so insane. I don't even know who you'd give the advantage to. I guess Oliveira, just because he is the most successful submission artist the UFC's ever seen. He holds a record. Yeah. Most subs in the UFC. So yeah. I it's guess you have fight. to give him I the like advantage it. there. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that fight didn't happen. Michael Chandler pushed out, in my opinion. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Probably never even got offered it. I'm just pissed at fucking the air for existing. Yeah, well, hey, uh, shout out to all the turkeys being slaughtered this coming week. <laughs> uh, that's who I wanted to shout out. We thank you for your sacrifice and the masses as we do a mass genocide of turkeys. Uh, well, fuck those bastards. We, we thank you for the, for the insurmountable sacrifice that you and your children make to make sure that our bellies are full nah. and uh, taste delicious. Dude, so. have you ever seen a turkey in the wild? I have not. They're real pieces of shit, all right? Oh, really? Yeah, so fuck them. Kill them okay. all. Eat them. Wow, man. You, really, you have a really strong stance against turkeys. I fought a turkey once. Did you really? No. Did you win? No. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's why I'm pissed. Okay, well, here we go. <laughs> Another one, Mason. Another successful show. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at the Church of MMA. Guys, make sure you go follow us if you aren't already. Posting clips, funny clips, funny memes. Hit us up. Check out our YouTube channel, too. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get some church merch, hit that link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching the Church of MMA. My name is Mason Knight. That is Tabor Cragen. And until next time, peace.